Awo, awo, salamtana, in naif, lenine, arasia, dinos, tesarine. Uh, we missed a call from our, um, one of our London um, people, our Ethiopian sister in London, Lishan. Missed your call, looking forward to hearing from you. Also, our brother, um, Oludari, um, as well as many others. And this is just, uh, giving one's, uh, inquan, adis amet, adarasachu in this particular season that we're in, as well as the Shabbat Shalom, or Sendat Salam, seeing that this is the 50th uh, Torah portion reading normally would be read at this pre present time, seeing this is the next Sabbath, and in the sequence of Sabbaths, this is the 50th, or Bamarinya Begebahim Gizeh, or in the Ibrahist, the Hebrew, as Ki Tavo. Now, that particular reading, um, now, there's a footnote here on page 7 that basically talks about there are certain Torah portion readings that are marked with an asterisk. You understand? And these portions are usually added to the following week's reading. Now, when we're in a, a, a high holiday or holy time, such as the, the New Year's, and this is the present time that we're about to get into what is what's known as the fall festival or the Hebrew fall festival seasons. So when it's a high holy day, that in a sense, since it's a high holy day, is also considered to be a Sabbath. That's, this is where there are two kinds of Sabbaths. There's the weekly Sabbath and then there are the annual Shabbats. And now on the annual Shabbats or the Senbats, as we say, or the Sinabitites, as they would be in a good sense, the high holy day is more um there's more emphasis added on the annual sabbaths than the weekly sabbaths so when we're coming into a period of the annual sabbath that in a sense trumps as they would say the weekly sabbaths doesn't mean that one doesn't have to read or or should not read and study up on that but there are other events and there's other ob observations that are occurring at that particular time and seeing that this is we're moving into this period of time of the Ethiopian New Year as well as upcoming um, Rosh Hashanah from the lunar calculation of time. Now we touched on that as as basic and as brief as possible just to give one an, a, a general idea of what's involved or what needs to be understood when we consider the change of the seasons, the holy times, the holy season, the calculation of time, the signs of the times, and other um, relative aspects that we attempted to touch on while speaking on the Ethiopian, the Addis Ahmed, as well as this being a leap year, so it's not on the 11th, but it's on the 12th, but this also present time is the 10th anniversary or memorial of the Twin Towers and, and the terroristic attacks, you know, September, the whole September 11th thing. But there's, there's, a, there's an important um, emphasis that we hopefully have made, and when all those videos are uploaded, ones and ones will get a chance, hopefully, to see the full message of the entirety of what we sought to address in that Babel 9-11, 9-11 plus 10, as well as the four Gospels, the four signs, the, the equinoxes and the solstices, and how all this works together within a holistic system. So it may seem a little bit complicated or even complex if one is not really familiar with it, but taking matters in their sequence and turn and then seeing the relationship with other aspects and elements, even scripturally, especially scripturally, gives one at least a good foundation to begin and to start. So we hope and pray that that has been um, helpful and insightful and um, instrumental if possible for ones and ones who are studying and for the disciples and discipleship. But the matter of identity, identity, who are we in relation to others? We may call ourselves Rastafari. Now, is that on a racial level or is that on a religious level? Um, what's the identification? Well, we know that as we touched on with the, um, the previous um, reasonings and readings and teachings, there is the so-called created race 
and then there, there is that chosen, particular chosen race, and even those who are the descendants of Abraham, as we address, we were uh, reading from um, which particular document that we were consulting, if we had a particular book here. Oh, that was the Recovery Bible. It was the Recovery Bible, which we suggested that if, if possible, um, BiblesforAmerica.org, they were distributing these free at the time that we had acquired this copy perhaps a couple of years ago. And we found it to be an instrumental um, reference and um, study point. Of, uh, the translation is good, you know, saying it's updated, but it's good, it's clear, it's accurate, it's consistent with them. Harik and the footnotes also are um, consistent and comes from a, a Trinitarian uh, point of view, perspective that's balancing the scriptures, and I think that's also very, very important for us, especially as Ethiopian Hebrews and as elect Rastafari. But now the matter and the idea of Trinitarian and that reminds me of tripartite um, treaties. That's one of the Gnostic Gospels, also very interesting. But when we are speaking of Trinity. It's very important for us to clarify what we mean. Now we've we've talked on that and we've reasoned and took, you know and there's certain things still to be um, illuminated that hasn't been illuminated concerning the Trinity. But it's interesting that the Almighty, that because there's a Hebrew Trinity or Judaic or Jewish Trinity within the Old Testament that some pretend not to see, but if you study the Scriptures, you will find this there. So what we have in the New Testament is a full revelation. Many of the ancient rabbis and teachers and those who could read, not everyone had access to the scriptures and even if they had access they couldn't read the scriptures. So we have a wonderful opportunity in this present time. You're saying this present dispensation. I mean even for us as as black people, you understand black people of the West. Now, this brings us to the point about the Amhara and the Ormo and the whole Ethiopian identity concerning the Amhara and the Ormo. And we still have to um, um, publish and post up there the video that we were speaking of, the connection with the biblical Ormo, or what we found to be a significant and a very possible link to the Ormos, the tribe or the nationality of people called the Ormos within the Bible. You know, saying that's connected, and then when we look at that and we consider the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, you know, saying, and that whole national or imperial epic of Ethiopia, th these are significant aspects. But a lot of this has a lot of this knowledge that one time even consisted of being an oral history. So therefore, for generations, even in Ethiopia, where um, biblical and holy Ethiopia, where ones were not fully literate or had access to all the scriptures, these ideas that we find embedded in the Kibra Neges, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, are very, very important. And they don't speak to just one particular quote, so-called tribe. But then the question about Amhara, Amhara has to be more effectively, we feel, dealt with. And this is where one particular sister has called and if you are uh, seeing this video, call again. We'll, we definitely have to link with the eye. Perhaps we might use the calling card so we can reason. You understand? They, they said they didn't want to put like a bunch of public comments and everything about it. And this makes me now wonder whether there is this discussion or some sort of discussion like this going on. And perhaps we've missed some comments or responses. And perhaps this is true since we've been mainly working on what is important and necessary in our ministry to put out next. So a lot of time we don't get much opportunity to always comment or respond or even get familiar with a lot of the responses because we're spending a lot of time in the aggregation and the composition and the composing and the recording and printing and the publishing and the other aspects like that. So if ones and ones do have that link with I and I and you come across a particular comment or something that may require our attention, um, either on the comment page, the first page, um, or either contact us directly, you understand, if you have the means to, and we are in touch, you, you know, um, we're still seeking to get a more 
effective organization. I mean, there, there's, there's people, there's, there's camps, there's ones out there, but we don't have as of yet an effective coordination and even an organization, an active network of us in the way that we should. But we will have that, and it's through these studies and through the application of what we're learning that we'll be able to bring all that into effect. Now, with that being said, the matter of um, His Majesty's Imperial Majesty and, and Amhara and His Imperial Majesty and Oromo and um, Ethiopia and the and Tigrayan, you know, what's the link between all of this? Many of us in the West, and so full disclosure, as ones know, we're Afro-Americans. You understand our so-called African-Americans. In our for, for 400 plus years, this is the general descriptor of our ancestors. So we are Ethiopians in the diaspora. Often, and you probably will hear this mainly in the line of Judah teachings and, and by I, Rasi Adinos Teferi, or Wendem Yadin, that we will say that we are Falashes of the West. We use this expression, Falashes of the West. Now, why do we describe ourselves as that, and what does Falasha mean? So, we're approaching, when we approach Ethiopia, and this is what's interesting, and there's a correspondence in the Torah portion that would be read at this present time, and that is the 50th Torah portion, in the Hebrew called Kitabo or Kitavo, and in Bambarinya called um, the Gebahim Gizeh. And the Turgum translation is when ye enter, and that is speaking to the Beta Israel of, of, of their operation, of how they are to, what are they to do when they enter into the Promised Land. So it's giving the key um, instructions. It's almost like someone is renting you a, renting your space or is giving you something or allowing you opportunity to live somewhere. This is what the covenant, this is now the, the land grant or that which now covers the provision in the land for us. So when we speak as Rastafari about repatriation, you know what I'm saying, about coming out of Babylon, about repatriation, about exodus, Burhanus Elazi or Bob Marley spoke of Exodus movement of Jah people. It's important for us to, to to understand our divine heritage or the scriptures of the Bible. You'll say because it's in and through the Bible that we as elect and faithful Rastafari have been able to make that link and connection with our identity with Ethiopia with, through His Imperial Majesty. you understand, and thus are at this present time preparing Yovasan for our own exodus as a people. Yovasan, but not just in the temporal sense, but also the spiritual and the metaphysical sense. Because it's important for us to come out first as we've been stating and seeking to emphasize spiritually, you understand, and mentally and, and psychically. You know because many come out physically but still are locked in. It's like they say you can take the the N word out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto, so-called, out of the N-word. So, until the N-word has a metanoia, or has a um, transformation, or be born again, when that N-word now is born again, and finds himself as an Ethiopian Hebrew, you understand, as an Ethiopian Hebrew, and begins to recognize that, that true connection to God, and the Moshiach, or the Christ, and then the real present um, revelation of how, what, why, when, where, so forth and so on. These questions now become answerable, and one can see clearly the reality, biblically and scripturally. Then one is, is like the Israelites, that generation who is ready to go in, you understand, and inherit and receive the inheritance or the physical land grant, or the physical real estate. So what we're dealing with now is the spiritual estate. You know what I'm saying? What is the spiritual and the psychological estate? Now that physical estate, you know what I'm saying, the first aspect of it is identifying ourselves, recognizing who we are, who our people are. So when we approach the Ethiopian um, 
question in the sense what when we say over here when black people in the Americas and the Caribbean and South and Central America when they say we're Ethiopians, you know, saying? and this is not a new thing. It's not in, in 2001 that this first was said. It's not in 2011 or in uh, 19. 70 something or 60 something we can trace this identification with the so-called enslaved Africans with their quote Ethiopian identity you know, all the way to the to the beginnings of the so-called slave trade the trans Ethiopic Ocean or nowadays is called the transatlantic slave trade so this is nothing new so it's important for us to recognize that Ethiopian is a more appropriate descriptor of us as a people than quote generally African though African is what is more used in so-called modern times and it's still used in these postmodern times but a more accurate description of us as a people those who have been able to make that that spiritual and mental ascent and that connection again goes way back you understand, and we've been seeking to prove that by certain, um, bringing certain documentation to light, certain books, certain other resources. This reminds us that um, for Ethiopians, native Ethiopians, because remember the saying has always been for us as Ethiopians at home and abroad. So there was a recognition, even from past and ancient times, previous times, should we say that there are Ethiopians at home and abroad. So the, the distinction between those so-called indigenous Ethiopians, which is a lot of the people that we are encountering, say, through our broadcast, and some who may even have a radical difference of opinion, you understand, about us and about Ethiopia, so forth and so on. But we can only base our conclusions, you understand, on that which is factual evidence and proven to us those who are the Falashas or Ethiopians abroad. So from the perspective of Ethiopians abroad is where we have been speaking and to whom we've been speaking to the Ethiopian and the Hebrew and the black Israelite, the diaspora to hopefully present certain facts as well as the, the evidence for them to check out and to, to, to fully weigh. So one should try to keep a, a kind of a as they would say, an open mind, you understand, know, until they have thoroughly investigated these things for themselves. But some may just choose to be argumentative and just want to argue, uh, argue about certain things and, and don't want to recognize our claims or, or even seek to prove it or disprove it. But we have proved it for ourselves and we encourage all disciples and all newcomers you understand, to the society and to this brotherhood and to the discipleship to study these things and to investigate it so that they can prove it for themselves. You understand, just don't take I and I word for it. We can prove what we claim and prove what we're saying to be true, but make sure that you can prove it as well. This is why it's been very important for us to present whatever materials or resources, and we know that some of these materials and resources, everyone does not have the economic, financial, well, well where, withal to buy these books or to get these particular things, whatever we can make available as best as possible. And if there's any special requests, one can contact us, www.lojsociety.org, and if you've contacted us before and have not received a response, please do not give up. Contact us again. And we'll seek to reach out because the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And the main part of these broadcasts and teachings is to increase the prepared and the equipped laborers to be co-laborers you understand, with us and so that we can fellowship together, but we can only do so in one covenant on one foundation. You know, saying, but it's not for us to force anyone, so we put this out so that ones can willingly, you understand, know, when they are willing, when they are ready, when they are able to reach forward, 
you understand? And therefore, that's, this is how we can build our community, this is how we can build our nation, this is how we can build, rebuild the empire, you understand, of the King of Kings and His Christ. This is how we build the kingdom. This is the kingdom ministry of the King of Kings and His Christ, in plain and simple relief. Now, there are two books here, and I don't know if um, Sister Lee Shine because you've contacted us, and hopefully we'll get a chance to speak. And there's other Ethiopians, native Ethiopians, who are truly interested and haven't had the, well, the, the wherewithal to really check it out, or maybe not knowing which sources or resources to check out for themselves. This is, these are two books right here by the same author, by um, um, Rudolph R. Windsor. Let's see if you can get a, get a, get a clip of this. From Babylon to Timbuktu is one of them, right? From Babylon to Timbuktu, right? This one. And then there's this one right here, which is the Valley of the Dry Bones. The Valley of the Dry Bones, right? And these two books go in a sequence like this is first, right? This is the foundation. And then after you read and study this one from Babylon to Timbuktu, then this one, the Valley of the Dry Bones. Because this now explains and makes the connection, especially these two books, especially, but there's other books as well. But these are two that we use in some of the basic, um, the basic courses and classes and independent studies for those who are studying independently, because we don't have the means or the institutions right now to even gather. You understand? We still we still are 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 raising up the foundations of David, which are torn down through the means of of the the teaching of his majesty and through the means of the communication of this to those who are willing and those who are able and those who are responsible and responsive those who respond positively in the spirit of truth you understand and have the patience and our, you know we can't be unequally yoked first and foremost and that's where a lot of problems in doing things for so-called black people has has fallen on his face. You know.